Could you sing a gospel song for me today? Oh, okay. Oh. Let me see what I got for you. What, do you have a, a, a particular song? Yes. Let me see if I know it. He promised me. Jesus promised me? Oh, yeah. You know, my grandmama used to sing that. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yes. That's There's a place. You want to sing it with me? In heaven prepared for me when the thoughts of this life is over when the saints are clothed in white beyond the throne singing praises Forevermore, my grandmama used to say, Jesus, he promised me a home over there. Jesus promised me a home over there. No more sickness, sorrow. Pain, a care, Jesus, he promised me a home over there. Praise God, praise God. Welcome to today's telecast where we believe in just do it how God's way. That's right. We believe in just do it how God's way. I am Pastor Stephen Chitman, pastor of the Second St. John Missionary Baptist Church located 305 Ingram Boulevard right here in the city of West Memphis, Arkansas. And I'm coming bringing you our home daily Bible study. And I pray that you've got your Bible and you are ready to go into the Word of God. Uh, just a couple of announcements to do just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, listen to this announcement as it comes forward. Cookies, 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 cookies with children. Join Pastor Stephen and Rosalind on Sundays at 9 a.m. We encourage you to attend this delicious study of the Word of God. Our youth are an important part of the body of Christ. Let's build hope in the children. I'll see you for Bible and Cookies this Sunday. Welcome. Take a moment to ponder where we stand with our families. The church has been successful with building the attitudes of children. Bible-based learning for adults and youth. Come over this Sunday and worship with Second St. John Church and Pastor Stephen and Rosalind Chitman and the fabulous families here. Remember, just do it, God's way. I pray that you will adhere to those announcements uh, as stated. We are interested in the family. We're interested in helping mold children in a biblical way. So please uh, take advantage. Come over. Be with us. Let your children come to Sunday school where we study the word of God, where we can shape their minds, uh, amen, in the word of God, that they may be successful in life. So I thank God for you just listening to those, a couple of announcements that we had. And I pray, I pray that you will get an opportunity to bring your children over to be with us uh, in our Sunday morning worship service. Remember, Sunday school starts at 9 a.m. every Sunday in person worship at the Second St. John Church where we have classes for men, women, and children. Also, I want you to be aware that worship service starts 10 15 a.m. If you want to get there in time, on time, I suggest that you probably come about 10 a.m. and be a part of our worship service at Second St. John Church. Hey, we're encouraging everybody to drop what you're doing come on out take time to worship god no football game uh nothing else is more important than giving our time over to god 
Let's get ready to go into our study for today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for about what you're about to do during this spot of time. Lord, we recognize that you are God, that you sit high, look low, that you're everywhere all at the same time. Lord, we come to your footstool. We bow down. We worship you. We exalt you, Lord. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we magnify you, Lord. Use us in your service today, O oh God. Forgive us of our sins as we have forgiven those that have sinned against us. Lord, we renounce uh, everything that's not like you, O oh God. We turn from our wicked ways. We humble ourselves and we pray unto you, O oh God, that you would heal our land. We thank you, Lord, that you know all, that you see all. Lord, we know that everything is under your control. Heavenly Father, we pray for the sick today. There are those who are going through surgeries even as I speak, oh God. There are those who are in emergency rooms, in hospitals, Lord, that are in clinics that are laying home sick right now, God. Touch them in a special way. You said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Encourage, give strength now, O oh God. There are those who've lost loved ones, Lord, who don't know where to turn. Lord, we turn to you, O oh God. We cling to you. Wrap your arms all around us. Give us being, give us strength now. Oh, we praise you now, Lord. There are those who are going through relationship problems, O oh God. There are those who have to make important decisions, Lord. Help us now, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you today, God bless you. Get your Bibles out, let's get ready to turn in our Bibles. Let's get ready to go uh, in our Bibles right now, amen. Let's get ready to go. We're going to Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 through 31. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 through 31, I'm going to be reading from the New International Reader's Version of the Bible, but you should be free to get out any version that you have. Amen. I'm going to read our scripture lesson in its entirety, and then you, we will discuss uh, what we have read uh, together. Get your Bibles out, and let's get ready to go into the Word of God. Then Moses reached his hand out over the Red Sea. All that night, the Lord pushed the sea back with a strong east wind. He turned the sea into dry land. The waters were parted. The people of Israel went through the sea on dry ground. There was a wall of water on their right side and on their left. The Egyptians chased them, all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. Near the end of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud. He saw the Egyptian army and threw it into a panic. He kept their chariot wheels from turning freely. That made the chariots hard to drive. The Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting Israel against, for, for Israel against Egypt. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, reach your hand out over the sea. The waters will flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses, so Moses reached his hand out over the sea. At sunrise, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians tried to run away from the sea, but the Lord swept them into it. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. It covered the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the people of Israel into the sea. Not one of the Egyptians was left. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. There was a wall of water on their right side and on their left. That day, 
the Lord saved Israel from the power of Egypt. Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. The Israelites saw the great power the Lord showed against the Egyptians. So they had respect for the Lord. They put their trust in him and in his servant, Moses. That's the word of God for the people of God. May we all be blessed in accordance with his word. Our topic today for today's discussion is God brings victory. God brings victory. Amen. God brings victory. Amen. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 through 31. Amen. God bless you today. Our topic today is a very good one. Our monthly topic for the month of October is out of slavery to nationhood. Out of slavery to nationhood. And today's topic, God brings victory. Amen. We thank God for each one of you today. It is a pleasure to bring you our topic on today. Many of you are aware we've seen the movie of how God delivers the Israelites out of an Egyptian bondage of slavery. We've seen it. We've all watched the movie, amen, as that dynamic uh, movie de depicts uh, Moses stretching his arms out over the Red Sea and God opening up the Red Sea and the children of Israel passing through the Red Sea on dry ground. And of course, the enemy is drowned in that sea. We've all seen it. We are all aware of that movie picture and that depiction of how God does it uh, for his people. Amen. Amen. And I just thank God for this opportunity to bring the word of God to you today. Our scripture lesson, amen, starts at verse number 21. But you remember how Israel was in bondage and had been in bondage for over 400 years working for the Egyptians. And God heard their cry. God heard the cry of his people and he delivered them. Now, th they weren't in trouble for one night. I mean, so many of us, uh, we go through our problems and we're not even there a day good and we are crying out to God. Now, that's the right place to cry out to. But what I want you to know that sometimes trouble can last a while, but we should never, never, ever give up on God, no matter how long it takes. We should be in for the long haul. No matter how long it takes, my trust is in the Lord. And God sent a deliverer in Moses. Moses' names mean drawn out of the water. Moses is here being used by God. And on the backside of all of the plagues that he allowed to happen to Egypt, that he might let the children of Israel go, amen, on the backside of them leaving, Pharaoh, amen, has this desire to chase God's children into the desert. And he wants to get them back. He wants to bring them back, put them back into captivity. So Israel is now crossing the desert and here is Pharaoh and his army in chase. Now, the Israelites, you know, they don't have all of these weapons to fight with. They don't have a mighty army. They're women, children, and families crossing over out of bondage. They're leaving filthy rich, amen, because God called the Egyptian people to give them, to bless them with, with, with clothing and gold and, you know, amen, whatever they had need of, amen, God blessed them to have it, amen. And there they were crossing the desert with no stores to spend the money, amen, but filthy rich crossing the desert. And just because you have money or you have wealth, <coughs> material wealth, does not mean that you will not have enemies. It does not mean that you will not go through other problems in life. I've seen people make the mistake of assuming if I had this 
or if I had that, I would not be going through any problems or any trouble. And a lot of times I, you know, I suggest to them to look over at some of the people who have attained wealth and still have trouble. Look at some of the personalities. I, I really don't want to name anybody because when you get to naming people, you assume it's only those people who have trouble. But here we see in our text today that these were God's children, God's people, the children of Israel who were having trouble with an enemy. <coughs> Can I talk to you? That's a message right there in itself to somebody that God's people, <coughs> excuse me, even have trouble. That's right, God's people, God's children even go through troubled times. But even in our troubled times, we cannot give up, cave in, and quit on God. We cannot cave in. We cannot quit. We must remain faithful to God. We must remain faithful to God. We must remain faithful to God. We must remain faithful to God no matter what. No matter what, we must remain faithful to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout right there. I don't know how many years it's been. I don't know how many months it's been. I don't know how many days it's been, but we must keep and put our trust in God. Here, children of Israel crossing the desert. Pharaoh comes after them. God is going to move in their behalf. I want you to know that. Amen. He's he, he, he's put a pillar of fire, cloud of fire, pillar of fire up. Amen. The, the, the uh, Egyptians are chasing them. Pharaoh and his chariots are chasing them. And the Israelites wind up in a place where you would say that there was no exit. Amen. God has led them to this place. Lord, God have mercy. I feel like dancing. God has led them to a place where they have to trust him. God have mercy. Many of us, God have led us to a place where we must trust him. You say, how did I wind up at this place where it seems to be no way out. I know some people's place of no way out, no return. Amen. Looks like the enemy is surely going to get the victory, but God has put us in this place that we might trust him. Lord have mercy. Oh Lord, their back is up against the Red Sea. No left, no right to go. The only place to go is into the sea, the Red Sea, an impossible barrier. God has placed a lot of us at those places in our life where there seems to be no way out. This is where our lesson starts. This is where our lesson starts. Amen. The people are wanting to say, we should have stayed in Egypt if we're going to come out here just to die. We should have stayed where we were rather than to be in this place where we have to rely and we have to trust God in order to save our lives. That's, oh Lord Jesus. That's where we are now. We're at a place now. We're at a place in the pandemic. We're at a place in our sickness. We're at a place in our family, losing loved ones. We're at a place where we have to trust God in order to live. I ain't talking about live down here. I'm talking about live in the place where life lasts forever. We got to trust God. We've got to trust God. We have to live in accordance with his promises. We have to have faith in what he has said. And we have to look back at what he has done and how far he has brought us. I know it seemed like he brought us this far just to put us in a place where we cannot succeed. But God is just putting us in a place where we have to place our trust in him. Lord, help us this day. Oh, this is a great word. This is a great word. God brings victory. This is a great word. Our lesson starts right here. I'm back up against the wall. Which way to turn? Our scripture today says, Then Moses 
reached out his hand over the Red Sea. All that night, the Lord pushed the sea back with a strong east wind. He turned the sea into dry land. The waters were parted. He turned an impassable place into a place of passage. He turned an impossible place, an impossible uh, situation. He placed an impossible thing. He gave access. He gave passage in a place where there was no passage. Oh, Lord, how mercy. God became the way we say out of no way. God became the way. Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. God is. Jesus is. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus is our way. Here they are right here, back up against the wall, and God opens up a passage that they may pass through their barrier on dry ground. Lord have mercy. Come on, work with us here, God. Moses has stretched out his hands and he obeys the instructions of God. The leader didn't even, <clears throat> the leader didn't have the salute. God had to show and reveal to Moses what to do. The people of Israel went through the sea on dry ground, crossed their barrier, the impossible place on dry ground. He had, they passed through the impossible situation on dry ground. Did the enemy go away necessarily? No, the enemy was still there, but they were making their passage. Many of us, Lord have mercy, we submit to victory because we see the presence of an enemy. But even in the midst of an, an enemy, God can prepare a table for us that we may pass even though we see it. It cannot overtake us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. I'm getting happy. Let me calm down. I'm getting happy. No, even though we're coughing, even though we see the signs that the enemy is present, but God is still giving passage. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for giving passage. Even though we see, amen, and we can sense the enemy, oh God. But thank you, Lord, that even now our barriers Hey, Lord, have mercy. You're making a way for us to cross over. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I want you to see, I want you to see that their back was against the wall, but God gives a passage. God gives passage. They pass through the sea on dry ground. There was a wall of water on the right side, wall of water on the left side. In other words, there was only one way to go. And that's to do it God's way. You got to see this. You know, you couldn't go left. No, you couldn't go right. You must go straight through God's way or no way. There was a wall on the left. There was a wall on the right, meaning there was only one way to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One way to go. One way. One way. God's way. He is the way. Amen. He is the way. He is my way maker. We must do it his way. There is no other way. If the enemy is going to get you, he has to go the same way that you are going. If he's going to chase you, he has to chase you the way God allows him to chase you. He can't come from the left. He can't come from the right. Why? There's a wall on the left. There's a wall on the right. If he's going to get you, he's going to have to come through God to get you. We've got to do things God's way. When we do things God's way, the enemy has to come the same way. And if he comes the same way that God has for you, he has to come through God to get you. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Bless this house, bless this house, bless this house. 
Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing us the way. They're going. They're going through. They're going through a wall on the left, a wall on the right. They're passing over on dry ground. What was impassable has now became passable. Verse 23 says the Egyptians chased them. They got to go in the same way that you went in. If you come in and do it God's way, the only way the enemies can get you is that they have to come by the way of God. The Egyptians chased them, all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots. The enemies after them, the horsemen followed them into the sea. Followed them into the sea. Followed them. Didn't come some other way. God is not going to allow us to be blindsided. They had to come the same way. Near the end of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud. He saw the Egyptian army. He saw the Egyptian army. They got to come the same way you went. In order to get to you, they got to come through God. If you go God's way, the enemy has to come the same way. He saw, God saw the Egyptian army and through it into a panic. Sometimes we wonder what happened to the enemy. They came by God. They came through God. They came God's way. And when they come God's way, God's able to affect them. Quit wondering what happened. Quit wondering why the enemy hadn't caught up with you yet. God threw the Israelites' enemy into confusion, threw them into a panic. They thought they were seeing stuff they didn't see. They thought things were happening that probably were not happening. I've been in anxiety. I've been in panic. Your body gives false signals. Amen. Things are happening that you don't even know are happening. The children of Israel are walking and crossing on dry ground. Yet the people with the mighty horses and the mighty chariots, they can't make it because God first throws them into a panic. Lord, have mercy. God's having his way. You're wondering why the enemy hadn't caught up with you yet. You're wondering with all of the computers and all of the mechanisms for the enemy to succeed and get the advantage over you. You're wondering what's happening. You're wondering why. Why haven't they got caught up with me yet? Why hadn't the enemy uh, destroyed me yet? It's because God has a way of controlling the situation and matters that it comes out in our favor. Lord have mercy. Lord, are you with me today? Are you with me today? Are you with me today? Faith cometh by hearing. You're hearing the word of God in developing and building your faith. He threw the enemy into a panic. God kept their chariot wheels from turning freely. God kept their chariot wheels, the big chariots that carry the warriors. He kept their wheels from turning freely. He kept their mechanisms from being effective against you. God says the weapons will form, but they will not prosper. Amen. The weapons will form. How do you don't see me yet? But the weapons won't prosper. They'll form. You'll see the weapons. You'll see the chariots. You'll see the arrows. You'll see the men. You, you, you'll see the horses. But, but they won't prosper. The weapons against you will not prosper. He allow them. Yes, they will form, but they won't work right. Amen. They won't do right. Amen. Because you are doing things God's way. And in order for the enemy to get you, he has to come through God. He has to come the same way to get you. God have mercy. The Lord is fighting our battles for us. Lord have mercy. Lord, these caused the wheels not to turn freely. They couldn't catch up because God threw them into a panic. Now he's causing their chariot wheels not to turn freely. Amen. He made the chariots hard to drive. The Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. Why? 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 Look at the enemy. The enemy has figured it out. The Lord is fighting for Israel against Egypt. The enemy has figured it out. The enemy knows God. Lord, have mercy. They know him now. They've gone through the 10 plagues. Amen. They know God. Their firstborn has fallen dead like God said because they weren't under the blood. They know God. They said to themselves, 
let's get away from God's children. Let's quit following them because God is fighting Egypt for the Israelites. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Did you? Somebody needs to be encouraged today. Amen. That God can throw your enemy into a panic. God can cause his wheels not to be able to turn. God can make things hard for the enemy to drive against you. Lord, have mercy. Come on in here. Lord God, thank you, Lord Jesus, because he has to come the same way you come. When you do things God's way, the enemy has to come through God to get to you, and God is capable, able <laughs> to handle our enemies. Let's go further. Let's go further. Let's go further. Let's go further. And as we look, as we look, the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, now look, I don't want you to think this happened by happenstance. Just like you stretched out your hands and with the staff and you raised your hands and I opened up the Red Sea with a mighty east wind, the same way I want you to raise your hands, reach out over the sea, and I want you to, to, to allow the waters to flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. I don't need you to be talking about this was just some happenstance. I want people to know that things are moving because I am in control. Ain't no use in you keep giving God's credit to other people in other places and allowing people to come in and tell you that it wasn't God and it wasn't this way. And you know how God moved in your behalf as you obeyed him. You know that God was moving in your behalf. You know that God told you that if you follow me, I'll fight your battles. Fight. Quit giving God's credit away. They wasn't going to be able to do it. God told Moses to stretch his hands out and God moved in behalf of the Israelites. Come on, come on, come on. The waters flowed back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. So Moses reached out his hand over the sea. At sunrise, sea went back to place. Egyptians tried to run away from the sea, but look at what God did. He swept them back into it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They tried to run, but God swept <laughs> the enemy back into the sea. He swept them back into the sea. Look at God. I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball. Laughter is healthy for the body. God, Lord, have mercy. Help us, Lord. Help them to see you, God. Help them to see you. Help us to see you more clearly, God. Help us. Help us to see you, God, more clearly. Help us, God, to see you more clearly. Help us, Lord, to see you more clearly. He, 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 the Lord let the sea come back over the Egyptians. They tried to get away, but the Lord swept the enemy right back into the sea. The water flowed back, covered the chariots and horsemen. It covered the entire, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the people of Israel into the sea. They followed them. The same way, there's only one way. If we do things God's way, the only way to get to us is you have to come toward God. Lord. That's why he says, you're not fighting me when I do things God's way. You're fighting the Lord. See, it's not, it's, it, it, you're not fighting us when we do things God's way. When the enemy comes, he's not fighting us. He's fighting against God. That's why people don't understand that, that when you fight God's way, you're not fighting the person, you're fighting against God. He caused the Red Sea to cover the, it covered the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the people of Israel into the sea. Not one of the Egyptians was left. Not one. The Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. Why? 
because the ground was able to carry them. Somebody said, well, 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 but because they were light, because they didn't have nothing heavy. They weren't heavy as chariots. Or, no, the ground was prepared for them. The ground was prepared for the prepared people. The ground was prepared for the prepared people. There are things that's only prepared for those who worship and serve him. There are things prepared the enemy cannot enjoy because they are prepared for God's people. The, 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 the eternal life is not prepared for the enemy. It's prepared for those who believe and trust in God. Oh, I, 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 think, I think it's getting plain. I'm, I'm not the best uh, explainer, but God can get his word across to who he desires to get it to. And I'm praying that God's word will be dropped off at the footstool of whom he has it for today. Quit giving your enemies so much credit, talking about what they got and all of the computers they got and all of the weapons they got. Don't you know that when we do things God's way, that the enemy has to come through God in order to try, try, try to get to us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Look at this. The Israelites went through sea on dry ground. There was a wall of water on their right side and on their left, one way in, one way out. That's the way God operates. <laughs> God have mercy, God have mercy, God. That day the Lord saved Israel. And that's what you got to remember. You know, my salvation is not of myself. My salvation is in the Lord. Amen. There is no other way to be saved except by the name of Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other way, no other way, no other way. No other way, no other way, no other way, no other way, no other way. Look at what they saw. Look at what they saw after doing things God's way. Look, Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. God allowed his children to see the victory that God had obtained for them. That's what God will allow you to see when we do things God's way. He will allow us to see that he has obtained the victory. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. 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 The Israelites saw the great power the Lord showed against the Egyptians. So they had respect for the Lord. They are new to this. They are new to this walk with God. But they had respect for God. Look at what the Lord has done. They put their trust in him. Who is the him? They put their trust in the Lord. Not only in the Lord, but in whom the Lord was using, his servant Moses. All oh, these people today, they, these people today, I trust God, but I don't trust no preacher. If God is using that person that's doing things God's way, then it is God that we trust in them. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. It's been a great day. It's been a great day. God brings the victory. I don't give the victory to anybody else but God. God has brought me this far. Yes, he's used people in his service, but as we travel in God's way, children of the way is what Christians were called in the Bible. 
as we do things God's way, God fights our battles. It is God that is saving me today. It is God that has built a fence, a wall all around me. It's God that's keeping me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's the Lord that's keeping us. It's God that's protecting us. It's God that is bringing us to our safe destination. God has made many promises. It's the Lord that has brought us. Thank you today for listening to the word of God. It's been a pleasure bringing the word of God to you. I thank God that you were here today to witness the power of his word. I thank God for an opportunity to give you the word of God. Now let me get ready to go, but stay for the prayer now. Don't leave without prayer. And I want you to remember this announcement. Cookies, 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 cookies with children. Join Pastor Stephen and Rosalind on Sundays at 9 a.m. We encourage you to attend this delicious study of the Word of God. Our youth are an important part of the body of Christ. Let's build hope in the children. I'll see you for Bible and cookies this Sunday. Welcome. Take a moment to ponder where we stand with our families. The church has been successful with building the attitudes of children. Bible-based learning for adults and youth. Come over this Sunday and worship with Second St. John Church and Pastor Stephen and Rosalind Chitman and the fabulous families here. Remember, just do it God's way. Thank you again. Thank you for joining us. Let us pray as we get ready to leave. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that you've delivered to us. We know that it is God that brings victory. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you for your son that died for us, that we might have a right to eternal life. We thank, thank you, O oh God, for your way, your life, your truth. We just praise you, O oh God, for being our battle axe in the time of trouble. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your way. Lord, we have a mind now to serve and trust you. Now, as we leave this study, but not your presence, oh God, we pray that guardian angels will go before us throughout this day, oh God, that the guardian angels will protect us on every side that they will clear a pathway that we may arrive at our destination safely. We give your name, the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Lord, heal the sick, deliver the wayward, save the lost, repair broke relationships, put money in empty pockets and food on empty tables and clothes in empty closets. Give shelter to the homeless, O oh God. Thank you for comfort and peace. Give strength today. We give your name the credit. It's because of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Be blessed today. Be blessed. Did you sing a gospel song for me today? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me see what I got for you. What, do you have a, a, a particular song? Yes. Let me see if I know it. He promised me. Jesus promised me? Yeah. You know, my grandmama used to sing that. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yes. There's a place, you want to sing it with me? In heaven prepared for me when the torch this life is over 
When the saints are clothed in white Beyond the throne Singing praises forevermore My grandmama used to say Jesus, he promised me a home over there. Jesus promised me a home over there. No more sickness, sorrow, pain, or care. Jesus, he promised me a home over there. 